themed battlegrounds. We did T for Teen. Welcome back to the HGC. We're currently watching as Synergy takes on the playing Duck Synergy. Oddly enough, I don't think I would have said this is up 1 0 <laughs> over their opponents, which again, I was mentioning I'm very proud of. I was going to say, wow, with your phrasing, great ambition for those <laughs> guys. Oddly enough. Uh, uh, but no, they, they did it well. Um, one thing that I want to bring up is that we said it in the draft for playing Ducks that some of the roles that they had there in terms of what I expected to occur down the line in the draft didn't work out quite as I was expecting to them to. And maybe they weren't as comfortable with that comp compared to something that was. You know, just, uh, I mean, obviously they're very good at the heroes that they were playing, but not quite the same dynamics that we've seen from them in other drafts uh, in other games. Yeah, it seems like you cannot run Solo Warrior against uh, a Sergeant Hammer. Just the upfront damage was a little bit too much here. The draft is ready to go. By the way, we are going to Praxis Holdout for our game number two. Uh, but yeah, Chris Vogen is not by any means a bad player, but his ETC was consistently getting picked up. Uh, and that's because he was a solo warrior oh. there. The Sergeant Hammer just working their way in. Playing Ducks will ban out the Zarya here on the left. We are on the Braxis holdout. I like that. So, yeah, Zarya being removed, it's good. good great space control. Um, a lot of people right now are very scared of shielding potential. And Tassadar has gone through. Mega they are going to pick it up a playing Ducks. Oh, and now this is kind of scary for Synergy. But we're on Braxis holdout, so Rexar could be a thing too. Yep, instantly becomes a ball of pick up here for Synergy, unless you, for some reason, want to give that away, and I would highly recommend you do not give Tassadar Vala. There's, yeah, there's so much. I mean, even if you don't give them Tassadar Vala, then there's Tassadar Tracer that could potentially come out. There's any number of options to empower the amount of shielding coming along here from it. So, I mean, even Zul Jin could be a thing. The, the more heroes that are coming out, the more options there are for Tassadar. <laughs> yeah. Well, I would recommend start building out your strong four lane in the bottom. You want to be able to handle the task that's coming your way. Uh, oh gosh, I wouldn't mind seeing Hammer early here for Synergy. However, they are forced into a spot where they have to pick up Vala, which, by the way, uh, Hammer is just as good with Tassadar at the same time for those engages. You actually don't use the shield so proactively anymore. You just mm. use them for more defensive measures. And with that level 4 talent with the armor, you are in a, a pretty poor spot. Synergy, however, will stay with the Varian and the Hammer as their first and second pick, expecting a Vala from the playing Ducks. Well, what's not broken, don't need to fix it, really. The uh, <laughs> the hammer, look how, pre how it's propelled itself. I am frightened uh, right now. Synergy, I think he needs to ban Chromie on the second phase here, because if you get Vala, and then you get a solid tank here, and then you get Chromie in the later rotation. Wow, could could we see a world where playing Ducks gets Vala and Chromie here at the very top? This is one of the battlegrounds that playing Ducks like to play it on. It's great against Hammer. You get your Vala Tassadar our coordination, and you can take whatever tanks you want later. They could, but then they would be in this weird spot where, again, Chris is the Vala, and he's kind of the Chromie, so they would have to put Sparbilly on one of them, which yeah. would probably be the Vala, you know. <laughs> uh, so it would be, again, kind of an odd setup uh, compared to what we saw in our previous game. Maybe, maybe they let the Tassadar through themselves because they don't want to deal with the Chromie. So maybe they're like saying, nice okay, time. you have Vala, Tassadar, and we'd rather deal with that than actual Chromie. I wonder so, if that's a felt. So they get Malfurion, they get Tassadar, they get Vala, Synergy. Uh, I don't know. I think I disagree with you a little bit here. I think we just ban Chromie. I think you have to. Um, hmm. Plandux has indicated that they're willing to play Solo Warrior already. They can get a strong top laner. Um, Dahaka's still available. And then you get your bottom lane, and you just chunk the bottom portion. And you never go for hard engage. And if they hard engage, you have your incredible auto attacker with the Vala. We'll see here, though, as Synergy, not thinking about their ban. Yeah, I mean, it, it, in terms of, like, an overall comp, I think that the Chromie ban makes sense, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a case of, who, as I say, who's going to play it. And the thing is, is that Vala's not really a difficult hero to kind of lean to. She's actually one of the heroes that I would say to people, are you new to Heroes of Storm? Yeah, play Vala. She's pretty good. Yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> she's one of those heroes that you can pick anything on and get it figured out, and you get to grow with skill, too, with that hero. All right, so Vala, 5-0 when drafted with Tassadar in the HCC Europe. That's going to be compounded here by Malfurion, mm. uh, constantly being allowed to innervate. He feels that shield's going, that cooldown popping up. The Morales is being covered as a ban. We talked about it in our first series of the day, but Morales Hammer can own a bottom lane if you allow them to be picked up in tandem. And with Synergy, being a team that's willing to play all these heroes, you know that Sefka is keeping an eye out for that Morales. Yeah, one, one thing that's very nice here for playing Ducks is that when you're going up against a Sergeant Hammer, actually Tassadar is a great tool, not only for Psy Storms, but also to just add extra kill pressure on towards the Hammer. Like, sometimes 
you have a bit of a problem where hammer is set up and you're like, okay, do we dive into that? Because you know you're going to guarantee be taking damage in that yeah. circle. At least shields can soak up some of that so that you can be in there and applying more damage to hammer. But again, we're seeing more movement-based hammers, more auto-attack focused hammers outside of Siege. And what is this? What is it going to be? I wouldn't mind. I what really it? still wouldn't mind a Rexar. <laughs> <laughs> Oddly enough, I'm thinking about saying this, but Triple Warrior, what do you think about Zarya Dahaka or Zarya Ragnaros? I mean, it's great control. You get your top lane, you get control on the bottom lane, you keep it away from but, Sports Billy. But is it enough pressure to eventually kill off of Vala? Oh, they take the Chromie away. Is Hydra just going to go for the, the entire like roster of heroes to play in HGC Europe? I think Neon <laughs> actually played the Chromie last time, and there's right, still room. True. There is still room for a top laner. Oh, Get hype, it starts with an R. Imagine that. It ends with XR. Imagine that as a comp. Hammer, Chromie, and then Rexar. <laughs> That's mental. So you have incredible setup with Misha sitting in the front line. You don't mind if Misha dies. However, with the control of Hydra, you'll be able to keep her alive for a while. Uh, but you get strong top lane control. You get hard engages variant, and you have Sergeant Hammer and Chromie just to I, poke away. I think playing Ducks would be in a very good position if they did have a Tahaka on their side. Yeah. They need something that's a good solo laner. Uh, I mean, Tass technically Tastar is not bad, but they need something that's a good solo laner and then something that can potentially catch Chromie and Hammer off guard. I want to hack Azaria, actually. I want to hack Azaria's band, though. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Don't need all those duh, shields. Duh, duh. <laughs> what am I thinking here, man? I can't pay attention. I would want it if it was available. Uh, so, yeah, I think you go with the Dahaka at the top lane. I agree with that. Oh, and right. there's Murder. Oh, they take away oh, the Rexar. What is all of this? <laughs> Outplayed, outskilled. Okay, wow. <laughs> so they take away the Rexar. They have three green heroes for the bottom left portion of it. Synergy. Hydra has to be kicking the crown right now. The last time Rexar was banned from him, he... Uh, he let us know on Twitter how is this, upset he was about it. Is this it. Grand Theft Hero? Is this, is this, <laughs> this what we are watching right now? <laughs> <laughs> what a crazy game here. The playing Ducks. Now on the far left, the strong top laner have a very strong bottom laner uh, with Vala, Tassadar, and Malfurion. Murden for the rotations, for the ganks. Solid pickup so far. Synergy, what do you get for your fifth hero? I think that I think they're stumped. <laughs> I think Tahaka is an easy pick. Yeah, I think so too. I think that's a great pick as well. Um, <laughs> what a world we live in. What a world. Trick. <laughs> Shen? <laughs> yes, the panda! <laughs> oh, ho, ho. right on! I love you, Synergy. I'm just throw it out there. And I love you too, playing Ducks. This draft has become incredibly insane. So now we have our Chin in the top lane. Chin is actually very aggressive towards a Rexar. It's a matchup that he can win well because uh, he can keep up with the pressure with the easy dive with his Q. He has his W into E, and he can burn Rexar down slowly, uh, which is a, a strong tactic to have. Rexar has better control over the beacons, but this is a game, dude. I'm just beaming. I'm so excited here. I've wanted a Chen all HGC Europe long. Uh, hasn't happened for us. It happened in America once. Yeah. Uh, or maybe even more than that. I'm not sure because I haven't watched the last couple of Americas. But brilliant. A Chen with all of this. And actually, Chen has great potential to protect a Chromie and Hammer. And one of the things, too, about Chen here that works again with the Tassadar and the Malfurion is that Varian has the engage onto a member. Chen follows up with a Q, drops one ring keg, knocks that opponent into his team, and can knock away the supports at the same time. So this massive support that's available for playing Ducks can get zoned out. If we get keg. If we get keg, yes. I, I would love it. I really would love keg. But I don't know what will happen. We'll see. We'll see. Game two. Let's do it here. Braxis hold out. Crazy drafts. Crazy life. Welcome to Heroes Europe region. We're going to dominate here as we go into Braxis hold out. All right, so Rexar is expected to be the top lane, but before we even get that far in strategy, Claris, the introductions. Wolf Joel and Malfury, and we're going to have Chris Explosion on Muradin. It's Sport Billy on the Tassadar. Next up, Chris on the Valor, and here we go. It's Nande going to be playing Rexar, and it's a lovely green Misha and Rexar. In the far right, Synergy, Sefka will be playing Brightwing. Power of Dream will be on Varian, and we will be having Neon showing off his Chromie. We saw it once on Tower of the Doom. Didn't work out too well, but definitely can be better here. Sir Ice Cream on Sergeant Hammer and Hydra, the catch-all of all the weird yes. heroes. It's going to be Chen. Yeah, yeah, that's brilliant. All right, here we go. Our first Chen. Okay, so heading to the top lane, and actually, 
Chen versus Rexart is a bit of an odd lane. He has so much health that not a massive amount of damage can happen, but you always, as the Rexart, have to save your stun for when he's about to drink. But drink comes up a lot quicker than the stun, so technically Chen is in a really good spot in that lane. Yeah, and he also stopped the aggressive pushing of Misha because he's going to on top of Rexart. Precisely. Uh, it's actually one of the best ways to control that lane. You just mount up as Rexar and just let Misha do her thing in terms of soaking. And that gives Chen the ability to keep up with that aggression. Here on the bottom lane, though, Nia, Neon starts to siege away with the aid of Sir Ice Cream on the back right. Chris will be incredibly aggressive here as he is the empowered carry for the Planet Ducks with those shields and the heals from Wolf Joe. All right, let's talk talents for a moment because it is elusive brawler for Chen, uh, which means that he's going to be able to negate a lot of the auto attacks that come in on a 20 second cooldown, but the basic attacks reduce the cooldown of elusive brawler as well. So he'll negate a lot uh, as long as you're... You, you've got to be pressing that quite rapidly actually as Chen. It's really surprising how quickly that comes back. Yeah, it's one of the mistakes that I made when I play that character is I don't use elusive brawler so much, but yeah. because of the auto attacks burning it down by three seconds, <laughs> can be in the middle of your opponents as much as possible and continue to use that fun, fun, fun hero there, especially with that talent. Tassadar has an 84.6% win rate in the ATC. Also, <laughs> turn it back, Tassadar is not overpowered. Thank you for the tweets here. Chris <laughs> and Chris Plosion continue to push down here on the bottom lane. That top lane continues to be back and forth between our two teams. Begins spawning in 10 seconds. All right, so what's our level one for him? Bird of Prey, it's almost absolutely the go-to for Rexar normally. You just want that extra little bit of wave clear. Uh, and the bird, it's, it's kind of weird because it, it, it's very narrow. So as soon as the wave is coming in, you want to use it. Uh, so that's something that Chen could try and exploit. Say, um, getting onto Rexar before he can even get in range of the wave coming in and meeting one another as a positioning fight. Yeah. Bottom lane continues to be dealt here by Cinder D3 to 3 into the experience. Brightwing actually face shifts to the top here to start grabbing that beacon as already Lady Ducks are set up very well in the bottom lane. At the same time, Hydra will defend the top, grabbing that experience. So Brightwing there does aid slightly for a small amount of time. And the poke continues. Both Synergy and playing Ducks in the bottom lane. Playing Ducks playing much better, it seems like. Our power is getting low on health. No more stun there coming out from Chris Plosion, though. The Storm Bolt was on cooldown. An attempt at a shot there against Spore Billy, but he does not die. Power of Jim is very low. That's a nice great a Storm Bolt, a dodge in. Chris Blosion nicely done there. Also wanted to mention that Murden is great in this form orientation because of yeah. his passive to heal up. He can take the damage, but unlike Power, who's been down around half health here, uh, Chris Blosion will get the healing back, so he can be playing aggressive, have Chris follow up, and then just back up and come back to the fight. Hungry Bear coming in at level four, so all of Misha's attacks will heal her maximum health from uh, 4%, or by 4% each attack. Uh, and then likewise, on the other side, we're going to get Donkey Kong Chen with Keg Toss. Yeah, so he's going to try and hit all of those kegs. And then once that quest is complete, he will have long range kegs for days. The damage is also increased all the way up to 60 at the same time. So yes, long range. He also gets a second charge when he hits 20 of those kegs on the opposing team. Uh, you can get double the value on Misha and Rexar if they group up at any point. So oh. another great talent there. Varian finally getting focused down, but this bottom lane Playing Ducks and just pushing it in here. It's, it's been opened up. Uh, and uh, I think that comes to back to the idea that Sefka's actually spent a lot of time in top lane. So it's been difficult for the three man down towards the bottom to quell the tide that playing Ducks has pushed on that bottom lane. So not looking too great for Synergy in this early game just yet. Not yet. Brewing also did get Pixie Charm. So Mercenaries will be the name of the game once again Yush. for Synergy here. Uh, again, they're clear on the Mercs is relatively weak, so another pickup for that Brightwing. Neon in the bottom here, trying to deal with the pressure coming his way. Has to get Bronze Talons going for the Ashwimpy build here. Dragon's Eyes, Bronze Talons, as well as Time Walker's Pursuit. Top lane has become a party now. That's Hydra, Power, and Sefka are all there. Neon low on health, though. Gets away with the little shield from Sefka to speed him up a little bit. Uh, playing Ducks is in no man's land, yeah. truly. They're in an odd spot here. Need to wait for the root. There goes the Volt to jump past Sefka. Well, be on the side <laughs> here. Wolf Joe is dead. He is gone. Sorry, you are the sacrificial lamb of this game. Uh, and you will go. They found themselves in an odd spot. They really wanted to kill Neon. They didn't quite get it. It was very close, but a stun comes out there from Power of Dreams on towards Chris. Shield's already down by Sport Billy, so they will put on pressure, apply it to Synergy, so they will not continue that fight against Chris. And Wolf Joe just being a stereotypical healer there, giving his life for his carry. Hearts out. 
the Wolf Joe as he allows Vala to retreat. Chris Blosion holding the bottom beacon and playing Ducks is in much better control here of the beacon phase. 60% here to the 0% available for Synergy. Kektos already done. Good stuff. And that is going to be Brightwing actually falling. Was that up towards the top? Oh, no, it's the down here. here yeah. Never mind. I was uh, looking at talents at the time. Uh, so we have taking flight uh, for Rexar. So a little bit of extra range on his uh, bird that he loves to throw on out. And this Misha is buying so much time. Yeah. They're in trouble here with this explosion working on those auto attacks. Really, that Skullcracker comes into fruition against Chen in particular. At the same time, Hydra, though, just going for a hard engage using that elusive brawler there. Still low on HP is Nande. He finally starts to escape. Power can't lock him down. Chris Explosion on the side, though. What a is brawl. being focused down. Yes, quite the brawl here between these tanks in the top lane. Chris is on his way to deliver some damage. All right, so everyone gets away with their lives. No doubt Brewmaster's balance. Yes, that is the case. Uh, the most amazing, amazing talent for Chen at level 7. If you're above 50% health, you're gaining a lot of health. If you're below 50%, you're moving really fast. And sometimes you like to manipulate how much uh, a brew you've got available to you. So you can get out of sticky situations uh, and just run away really, really fast. At the time of a good Chen player using that brew to their advantage here. Engage once again on Nande and Chris. Chris working in these auto attacks. The multi-shot build has been the choice for him. This place is all three members, but with Brightwing here, clearing up the heal, Hydra just being a nuisance with his brew and these tanky shields. Yeah, I think that's one thing that newer people to Chen don't do enough. It's one, manage their brew, and two, be drinking a lot. I, I normally wouldn't advise that, you know, in real life, but here in uh, Heroes of the Storm, yeah, that's great. <laughs> you can actually do that with Chen uh, quite nicely. Yeah, power goes into the engage, explosion low on IT, Chris, uh, helping out with the damage, will start to auto attack. and. America, the FDA mentions that you should have at least eight pints of water a day. Hang on here, as power gets in trouble. But when you're playing Chin, you should have at least 10 brews. Sepka <laughs> starting to retreat, does get away. Nine to eight playing ducks. Very head here, inexperienced, about to hit level 10. Also have 6% for the XP. Did you say eight pints of water a uh, day? Yeah, eight cups, but I said eight pints. They want you to drink a lot of water during the day. That's a lot of, well, if it's eight pints, that's insane amounts of water. It's insane amounts of water, man. They don't want you to, that's uh, to play water. around. That's more water than my body encompasses already, and that's I'm 75% water. Your body wants it, man. Give your body some water. Ah, okay. We're giving you tips here at the AGC. Keep yourself <laughs> healthy. We love you hanging out, watching the video games, and staying incredibly healthy. Big beacons. For the playing ducks here, 60 to 54 percent. Massive pressure in the top lane, though, as synergy I is working to get to 10. That is a phrase. Big beacons. Big beacons. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, that's one for the books. Uh, Archon, <laughs> as well as what we're seeing here, it's going to be the little boars coming out um, to try and put on some pressure here. But unleash the boars. Very annoying here. Uh, slowing all of these guys down and keeping people in the range of spot builders so he can get the auto attacks in. Storm goes down as well. Varian will pop and. But Synergy really needs level 10 very soon. Only support is great for chasing down those heroes that won't be from afar. Your Chromies, your Sergeant Hammers at level 20, it becomes a brute. Yes. If it connects, it becomes yeah. absolutely outstanding. Uh, literally, Rex starts to go for face at that point there. So really fitting in for his Hearthstone mantra. Neon continue with the poke down here on the bottom left, but the beacon phase 100% nice. goes into the favor of the playing ducks. I mean, at level 20 for Rexar, I wouldn't be surprised if you still see the hardened shield kind of variant come out because no. it is still very powerful itself. Give me the Unleashed Support's route. I, I like the route, though. I do <laughs> like the route. It's such a long Ooh. range. Speaking of long range, geez, Chris, do not get hit here uh, by your very favorite gnome as I'm going to have this for almost certainly fall. And we do have Wandering Kick coming out here as Torn is going to be chosen as well as Blink Heal, Napalm, as well as Temporal Loop, obviously from the Nice, ooh, getting that wandering keg, gets that disengage available. Not fearing here with the heals for Chris, his favorite druid keeps him alive. The big push here on the bottom. Brightwing's in the top, dealing with the Rexar. Rexar is actually going to engage on Brightwing, but Hydra in the bottom is helping the defense here. It's power at the same time, looking for more. They will defend this push that has come their way. Sefka does blink heal away, will survive for now. All right, so. And they're just going to back off and look to clean up this wave as well. And uh, Rexar's not too bad at it, quite proficient. Just send her through with her charge. Uh, but they want to kill off the Ultralisk and uh, then probably that Guardian uh, as while well, getting towards it, killing off a few more. So looks like an attempt at an attack here as Power of Dream as well as Hydra. Don't. Ooh, almost died off, did Muradin. Scared for a second there, thought we would see it dive into a wandering keg, but with the jump being that's, available, explosion gets away. That's the big problem for playing ducks now, is that any fight that does go down, they've always got to be careful of their ranged assassins, aka the, the Valor, 
being pushed away from the entire team if he walks too far forward. That's going to be a stun on towards him. Hydro is looking to pursue. That was a good uh, damage coming out from Neon, but it was healed up quickly. Thank you for the damage back up. Chin just sits here and says, you're an Archon? Well, I'm a Panda. Takes no damage oh. from the Archon as it sieges upon here. Still at full health Stun. here. Here comes Dante, though. Big unleash the boars. Chromie, Sergeant Hammer walking away. Here is Keg. Keep the fight away. Chris Plosion has been pushed into the team. The Keg pushes everyone away. Chris Plosion at the same time still in the back. Hydra consistently drinking. He is low on health, though. Didn't do enough. Did not do enough with that keg. The top of it rolls off to the side there as Chris Plosion pops his avatar, gets in the thick of things. Power of Dream under a lot of pressure. That's a great stun coming out from Rexar. They follow it up with a double kill as they're going to now look for a little bit more. Don't quite find the room for it, but two for zero is a brilliant trade for playing Ducks. That it is. They are moving in for a boss. Focusing it down. Synergy on the right side is aware of it, but Chris Plosion is zoning out the entire opposing team. That keg would have actually been very solid if we had level 13 for Sergeant Hammer, the giant killer. Mm. May have given them a chance to actually deal with that Murden that was up full on health. Sadly, it did not work out for Synergy, and they are paying heavily for it here. A boss will be pushing their lanes. Yeah, there's a weird world in when you're having Wandering Keg where you want to push someone towards your team, but you also want to push a lot of people away from your team. Uh, so technically at level 20, you can take the insane fast one, which is ridiculous. I, I don't really advise people take that because sometimes if you're pushing just one person, you go so fast that you actually push through them. Uh, and it's a, it's a bit of an odd spot. So you normally see the hardened shield come in. Uh, but anyway, uh, we'll see as the game goes on how he's going to be able to effectively use the keg. That's the boss, shredding here. You need to be careful in the positioning. Power of Dream on the right side. Chris Bullion goes for the engage. Will connect the Storm Bolt. Looking for more. Chris on the sign here with that multi shot slowing down the uh, opposing team. Actually, he just picked up Bloom here for the Chromie. So, no slow there, but still AoE damage Beacons. hitting power. The beacons are now up. And they are being completely controlled here by playing Ducks. They are well in the driving seat right now as Hydra would love to try and push someone beyond this wall, but Flame Ducks is giving them no such opportunity. Uh, Rex are going to be healing up Misha towards the bottom. Power of Dream taking some damage there, pushing, trying to push on towards Chris Plosion. He's very, very tanky, though. They're trying to put on pressure towards Hydra themselves. Power of Dream getting hit by that storm, and Hydra is going to have to get out. He might have to pop Keg to get out of here, or he just dies. He's very close, and he will fall without actually using Keg as a retreat tool. Synergy now on the retreat. They are big beacon. Grab here, 100% for the Plain Ducks, and they are not done. Chasing down a third member. Plain Ducks continuing with this Tacit Arvalicom to destroy the opposing team. Synergy in trouble. We'll be able to siege up and defend against the push here, having their Sergeant Hammer. But the tools they have for engages is going to have a very difficult time here with the Zerg wave pushing. Yeah, I think the Chromie into double support is has a horribly horrendous time of doing anything. One, you're having to chew through shields and then you get it done, but with, with a Tassadar and a Malfurion, by the time Chromie has done damage, unless you have great follow-up, they're just healed up again. Uh, so they can't, they can't find any target that they want, and they're going to lose a keep for basically for free. 16 versus 13. Nisha does fall here as Breton will take her out. <laughs> it wasn't for free. Call Peter! <laughs> It is scary, though, uh, your point about Chromie there. The double support, yeah. and then also Misha being in the front to soak up that damage. Power in trouble once again. The big jump here from Chris Explosion as he'll be using heavy impact with the stun. There goes the counter engage. Cleanse does come out, and that means Toporo will hop up. There is a big siege. It does not connect only here with Chris, but he is low. The strafe is used at the same time. Chris is still alive. His support's keeping him there. Finally, he will fall. Sergeant Hammer has siege up in the middle of the fight completely. Chris Bloger will move forward here, having that Skullcracker available can slow down his opponent, but the taunt comes out, and Synergy is here for the chase. This is where Hydra can destroy the constant slows here from the Donkey Kong build. Absolutely lovely stuff there from Synergy, and may I say, top keg. Top keg, my friend, because that's <laughs> what came out here from Hydra to actually push on and punish what we saw there from playing Ducks, who overstepped just a little bit. Very nice stuff for them to try and get in a spot. Antihero, the famous Chen user of way back when. Hello, buddy. Get Loving the Chen play. Get that hero, thanks for the shout out there from Hydra. He's pushing in. There goes the catapult focus down the keep. 
low on health already here. Sergeant Hammer can back up. Do need to be quite careful, though. Vala does have the chase here, especially with his auto attack starting to go. Power here is the strafe. Automatically popped out. The stun on power will Ooh. slow down the strafe that is occurring. Hydra needs to drop down a couple of kegs to keep the opposing team from chasing. Yeah, and uh, I think Power Stream is probably dead at this point. He's very close to end up dying off. He tries to charge towards the wall. Oh, good save for him so far. Sefka. Sefka teleports out. They've gotten away. They've gotten away there off that little bit of greed that we saw. Neon trying to slow them down with Time Trap <gasps> as well, though. Oh, the root. Neon still Te low. So they're keeping him alive. Technically, keg. technically, Hydra still has Wandering Keg, so he can get the some of his members out of here if needs be. Stun goes on towards Hydra, looking for more damage on towards him. Playing Ducks have pursued them the entire length of the map, and they did not secure kills. Solid teamwork from the team. They were low on mana, using every resource they had to escape from the push that Playing Ducks were chasing there. Hydra now, with him being tapped off. Neon, full on health. Sergeant Hammer, right wing two. They look for their engage, jumping on Misha. Power on the bottom left side. As Synergy will attempt to grab their own beacon, to slow down the snowball that can occur here from the Playing Ducks. They have a top lane pushing with catapults. <laughs> Imagine, all right, imagine a scenario in the real world where a panda is throwing kegs of beer at a bear. Yeah. That's what we just saw. One can talk, one cannot. <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> it's, a, it's a weird and wacky world that we live in. That it is. You can't think too much about it. No. Just enjoy, just enjoy. Big siege damage here on the Misha. <laughs> can Misha live? No, Misha. The, oh, <laughs> Let it get away. <laughs> She will survive there. The shields coming in. The heals from Nande and Malfurion. Good enough. Chris Explosion on the bottom left. Hydra jumping out. Big damage on Misha. Power goes to the engage of Chris Explosion. The taunt is here there's, into the Polymorph. There's a potential for a really good lockdown here for Synergy because this is a very narrow area. They could use Keg to great effect as they're trying to push them off of this beacon. At the same time, no, he's going to fall down. Too much damage was going on against him. He had to try and retreat away there. Playing Ducks looking to seize the advantage once again. Technically, they have the beacons. They but are looking for more damage, but they should be cleaning up some of the camps towards the back, unless they can get kills here. Neon in trouble. Oh. There she goes. Gnome down, everybody. At the same time, top lane pushing in. We have the mercenaries there. We have castles starting to group up. The armor has been built through here. Broken down already on that lane. There will be a big push in the bottom lane for the playing ducks. This keep yeah. is the only fortification that is here to hold down. Power, though, goes for the engage to oh. save his hammer, but hammer down as well. Everybody going down. Very nice play here from playing Duck, showing that they can bring some really strong... Did Misha just die? <laughs> showing that they can bring some real flair here with this composition. Take away the Rexar from the potential choice from Synergy and really bring the fight. 1-1 one, one going into this best of five. Playing Ducks tying up the series there. Solid play from them. Tassadar getting through the draft there with the Vala combination continues to be a solid win ratio for that tandem of heroes but nice job by our two teams we are getting ready for game number three the playing ducks will continue to take on synergy mm, what do we have here let's get this promo tour started Oh yeah, Lucio in the house! 